<coughs> hello, hello. Let's kick it off with a song sent in by a listener. All right, let me find it real quick. It's, it's funny. I fixed a few things. Where's my version? One second, guys. There it is. Let's start this again. Was set in from a, sent in from a listener with a few minor adjustments from uh, from myself. Being Canadian in the world today with a prime minister who sucks a lot. He snowboards with his daddy's money, a real leader he is not. I'm pretty sure he's full-blown gay. <clears throat> I'm not, I'm not sure you'd want to go. Where people kind are forced to say his name. And his rainbow socks are lame. He has no sack. He has a sack that contains no balls. His fake eyebrows, soy, and shame. Shame. Uh, everybody knows that Justin Trudeau is a fag. <laughs> I just love the fag didn't rhyme. <clears throat> Let me give that one more shot. Being Canadian in the world today with a PM who sucks a lot. Snowboard. Snowboards with his daddy's money, a real leader he is not. I'm pretty sure he is full blown gay. I'm not sure you'd want to go where people kind are forced to say his name. Trudeau and his rainbow socks are lame. Diversity. He has a sack that contains no balls, his fake eyebrows and soy and shame. Everybody knows that Justin Trudeau is a fag. Alright, that's hilarious. I like this theme when people send me in stuff and I just I just play it. <clears throat> Man, my allergies have like not uh, let up, but it's all good. Small price to pay to be a tall. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. All right, before I get into anything I was going to talk about, I want to catch up on some of my uh, PayPal chats. People can go to paypal.me slash feed the bear and send me a nice note, a little tip, a little, little, uh, little honey for the big bear's honey pot. And uh, let's read some of these babies. All right, let me expand the window. I hope you're all having a great day so far. I am. Wrote some funny stuff with Crowder this morning and... Uh, now I'm here with you, drinking some coffee. Dear Owen, I've been thinking about how innocent my childhood was. I remember a 90s movie that had a Muslim woman in it, and I legit thought she was a ninja. Even after 9-11, I was ignorant of what Islam was until high school. What do you think the right age is to start teaching kids about the things that are worrisome, such as terrorism or gang crime? It's a great question, man. This is from Regs Bear. Uh... I had the I had a similar upbringing. I I remember when I when I was first doing this is how quickly things change. When I first was in LA doing stand up, I had a joke that said, "Man, I'm from a little town. I always thought tranny was just part of your engine." Okay, think about how many layers that is. So, not only could I say tranny without anything, I didn't know what that was because there was trannies all over the there were tranny prostitutes all over LA. I lived in a neighborhood with tons of tranny prostitutes. And um, anytime I heard tranny, it was transmission. I like the, the concept of tranny being hate speech is so new. Like most people didn't know what it was. And then immediately it was hate speech. That's why all this stuff is such BS. Because it's not like these, na these words have like a history of keeping people down. Most people didn't even know them. Uh, I don't know. I think that I'm all about keeping Wally innocent as long as I can. Not innocent to struggle or effort or trying hard or 
I'm going to teach him about, I'm not going to lie to him, but I don't want, I don't know. I don't think I want to sit, sit little Wally down at three and be like, Hey, little buddy, you know how Jesus is kind? Well, I'm about to teach you about a guy named Mohammed. That dude had a whole different approach. But yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting time to have children. It's a challenging time, but it's a great time to have children. Great time. Because we're witnessing a lot of change. And change is a, is a cool time for a lot of you guys out there that have potential that isn't being reached. You know, you might be in a, a, um, an area of society that, and, and you as an individual is like, I want to, to do more with my life. And th there's no better time than now. Because change is when uh, you can you know, I think it's in, I don't know what language it is. It might be Cantonese, but the word for chaos is the same as opportunity or tragedy or one of those. All right, continuing on. I know you're crazy busy, Big Bear, but it would be wicked sweet if you and your brother could get some Case Closed Beers open episodes in the can before the move. I know you're also on a Rogan type diet right now, but there's something special about listening to you and your brother solve cases and crack beers. Uh, best Eddie Bear. Yeah, no, we have. I have a video for you that I'll play in a little bit. Me and my brother had a bit of a of an adventure yesterday. It was a, a lot of people commented that uh, it reminded them of Case Coast Beers Open. Case Coast Beers Open hasn't been made since Cap's funeral because we we're gonna do the case of the missing Cap, and Cap is our friend who died of heroin. He was a vet. He was in a bunch of the episodes, and so at his funeral. You know, everybody's drinking and we're asking his old buddies, like, where, where do you see Cap right now? And uh, it got real emotional. And we were going to use the audio to, like, cut up, to make something that tragic funny. And as the editor of Case Closed Beers Open, I, I started, I couldn't do it. I started, like, distancing myself from the whole thing because I'm like, and then it's so easy how things can fall into a cycle where then uh, neither one of us wanted to address that episode. The case of the missing cap, you know, and that we're like the boys were on an adventure to find cap because he was in like half the episodes. But I know what you mean about the cracking beers. Case closed. Beers open. It was a it's a podcast that you guys can find on iTunes and a couple other places, I think, where my brother and I would um, would be hired to solve crimes from locals and we'd only be paid in beer and we like sucked at it. And it was all audio. It was all like old school radio. You know, it was funny. Hi, Big Bear. Here's a small donation from the Netherlands. Thank you for the podcast that, that you make. We need more bears over here. I'm 38 years old and just became a father of a beautiful boy. Congratulations. Every time I listen to your podcast, it feels like I was sleeping and just woke up. It makes my mind spin in a good way. Thanks, Big Bear. Can I be Dutch Bear? Stay strong, my friend, and I hope you will do some stand-up in Holland soon. Um, welcome, Dutch Bear. That was very nice of you. Very kind words. Thank you for all you do, Owen. Honored to become part of the Bear family. Your voice is important. Never allow anyone to silence you. Father made of metal bear. Or feather made of metal bear. Thank you very much. Big Bear, Trevor Noah thought... Oh, this is hilarious. Trevor Noah thoughts. Part of his shtick, he does the Phil Hartman SNL caveman lawyer, and Noah goes off on these rants about how he's from Africa and doesn't understand why we do certain things in the USA. He's such a hack. I know. He really does. Unfrozen caveman lawyer, for those of you that don't know, was Phil Hartman's character that was like... It was a, it was a cave... It was a caveman who was unfrozen he's like hey i'm just a caveman all your uh your f fake your 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 fake sons and and your blankets and your cars just frighten me and scare me and i don't know what anything is but one thing i do know is my client was wronged and she deserves 3.3 million dollars by the end of the month and he'd always win that's just like what trevor noah does he's like Hello, I'm from Africa, and in America, you people make no sense to me. It's like you have a, a leader who's white who does not hate himself. I, I don't understand your crazy ways. It's like, yeah, Trevor, you're from literally the, one of the most horrifying countries on the planet. Like a country that went from the wealthiest African country to the one of the poorest with the highest rate of AIDS. And there's currently a massacre of white farmers happening. And uh, that was because uh, Nelson Mandela, the former terrorist, introduced a, a series of socialist 
policies. And now it literally, one of the biggest problems in South Africa right now is the rape of babies because they think it cures AIDS. And it has the highest AIDS rate in Africa. That's like the tallest guy in the NBA. Like you're already in the AIDSiest content, continent on the planet and you won. So when he's like, hey, listen, I'm from Africa. I'm like, yeah, yeah. That's why we don't want your advice. Because unless you have humility, like I know, I know a couple dudes from Africa that are awesome. That they're like, I, I really like America. It's great. It's the land of the freedom. And I'm like, welcome, my brother. It, it's the ones that are like, listen, I'm from Africa. I don't seem to like this whole freedom thing you guys got going on here. Where's the AIDS? That's why this whole like racial uh, explanation for everything is just winding down. Because the more people are actually to, exposed to diversity, the more they realize it isn't about race. You, will, you can meet the blackest Nigerian on the planet. And if he's like, freedom is great, you're like, you're going to be good here, my friend. He's like, I just want to work hard and have the baby and take care of the baby and respect this great, peaceful country. And I don't know very many people that would not be like, yes. It's the people being like, I am from a place where we cover women, cut clit, and hate everybody else. And now I bring it here. And it's so obvious. And, and uh, Tommy Robinson, God bless, was just moved to a prison that's 71% Muslim. And they're starting a chance to kill him. And uh, there's, there's, now, there's obviously a price on his head. There's been a price on his head for years. But he's scared for his life. And the British government just did that because not enough people spoke out. And uh, yeah, and it's still now not enough people are sp speaking out. And uh, now's the easiest time to stand up to tyranny because you still have your freedom. And that's not an advocation of violence. It's, it's, it's just, there will be a time when I will advocate violence, by the way. I'm not a pacifist. It's just violence is uh, one of the worst solutions. You want to use scalpels, not machetes. Because violence always has collateral damage of your own people. So just just speak out about how messed up it is. And there's so many people on Facebook, they're like, he did break the law. I'm like, yeah, slavery was also the law. So is the Fugitive Slave Act. So is uh, Jim Crow. They had to have a law to separate blacks and whites in the South. You understand that? <laughs> Laws, like it's a law is not an argument. I'll show you a thousand laws that are crazy. For some reason, immigration being a law doesn't seem to matter, but so you either die. All right, this is from another bear. You either die a hero, live long enough to see yourself become the bad guy. Has never been truer in regards to the likes of Joe Rogan and so on. Are they all bending the knee, throwing the masses to the grinder to stay on top? What the fuck? That's why I have so much respect for you and support you in this fight. I'm sure Joe ain't stupid, but he shows the power above him can ruin his life at this point, And it's all... Uh, his, his fault for never calling bullshit on true bullshit and defending people like you. Fuck. Uh, I just think it's, I, I did a whole video about it yesterday, not about Joe, but about the motivations of different people. It's called, uh, leftism isn't crazy. I recommend you watch it. People seem to really enjoy it. It's a, uh, a breakdown of how people have different motivations and, and people will seem crazy because they have a different motivation than you in regards to Rogan. Um, I think he's done a lot of good. He's still doing good. He's a dude doing his thing. I'm not going to uh, throw heat at him at all. I will say it was a little disappointing yesterday to hear him say he didn't even know who Tommy Robinson was. And he kind of shrugged it off. Like, I mean, I Googled the guy. He's like British or something. I'm like, dude, <laughs> it's just at that point, you're like, come on, man. Come on. But I got, I don't have ill will. But um, I just think it's motivations. I think if you're in an area so long, you start, you don't realize how you sound. You know, I think that's just part of it. I think part of it's just geography and who you're around all the time. But I don't really understand it. I don't understand why some great, smart, digni like people with a lot of dignity bend the knee. I don't, I don't get it. Because like what they're giving up, if you're trading, it's almost like, Okay, I'll give you a car, but I get to rape you. You know what I'm saying? It's like, 
the deal when people shift currencies, they have such a hard time understanding the currency exchange. You know, we seem it's so easy for us to be like, okay, 1.6 pounds to the dollar, blah, blah. What about like ethics to the dollar? And this is coming from a dude who never in a million years thought he would be giving morality advice to people. That's why Reluctant Warlord makes me laugh. Because like, I'm not the guy that's like, I really want to stand up and show people how to be good people. I, that's not how I really viewed my life until I watched just so much of the population just become awful. All right, here's another one. Been a fan for a while and I think I got a decent pulse for what you're interested in and I'd like to beg you to check out Nassim Talib, Taleb. His work in some ways is similar to Peterson's, but he is an uh, economist, risk analysis, and approaches it from that perspective. I'm 25 and I'm still trying to figure out the man I'm going to be. And I found Nassim Taleb up there with yourself and Peterson. Honestly, with a good dose of comedy from the big bear, psychology from the good doctor, and an understanding of incentives from Taleb, it's, it's uh, hard to suck. Much love, Drew. What a great letter. Yeah, I'll check him out. You're not the first person to told me, tell me about this guy. So I'll, I'll check him out. For sure. Yeah, and from me, you get comedy and just um, emotion. You know, I was talking to somebody about that. People sometimes online go, you, you're giving us a bad name or something like that. I'm like, what? They're like, would, would Jordan Peterson say what you just said? I'm like, no, Jordan Peterson doesn't live in a world where his tools are hyperbole, exaggeration, and irony. Because I'm a comedian and Jordan Peterson is an academic. So when Jordan Peterson says... He has to watch everything he says and not make any mistakes. I'm not that. And I respect that he's doing that because in his world, it's about the precision of analysis. In my world, it's about hyperbole, which is the exaggeration of things. Uh, Irony, which is saying the opposite of something or pointing out something that contradicts itself for uh, the effect of laughter. And uh, sarcasm, saying stuff like, man, I wish I owned a slave. Like stuff like that, and it couldn't be dip more different. It's like a jazz pianist and a uh, a classical pianist. It's like it's like telling a jazz pianist like you're not playing in two four rhythm or something. That's not four four. Hey man, ever heard of a quarter note? It's like dude, we're way different. And I think one of my things that people seem to like, and I seem to be pretty good at, is authentic emotion. That whole, I might be wrong, but I'm not lying. Like, if you watch my Anthony Bourdain's A Coward, that's what that is. And so when people are like, oh, you, you seem unhinged and stuff. It's like, no, that's what I do. I, I show the, uh, the honest emotional reaction of things. And that is a lot of times extremely funny. Sometimes kind of funny. Sometimes jokes bomb. Sometimes it's tragic. Sometimes it's sad. Sometimes it's angry. That's what art is. Because Jordan Peterson isn't really an artist. I mean, he's a writer, which is an art, and thinking, I guess, is an art in a way, but not really. He's uh, more of a scientist than he is an artist. In science and art, there is um, overlap, but it's not the same thing. And so when he's giving an analysis, it's much different than me uh, giving the raw comedic slash tragic look at something with hyperbole, sarcasm, and um, irony. Because with, with the things I use, that's why on, on Twitter and stuff, I used to be like, I'm a comedian. And people would be like, why are you saying it? You shouldn't have to say that if you're really funny. I go, no, you have to know that what I'm doing is exaggerated and the opposite of what I believe because that's how jokes are structured. If you read it literally, you're not understanding that I'm a comedian. So when I say I'm a comedian, that means you have to read it differently. That's like if I... It's like if someone said, oh, I'm a court stenographer. Someone's like, why are you telling me that? It's like, oh, because everything I write is in like abbreviations and there's a code to it. It's like, no, I don't think you can spell. It's like, no, I'm a court stenographer. All right. Love the Portland show. First time chat supporter. I'm an aspiring comic. Thanks for the collaborative joke writing. I love that. Dude, send me your info. I need more comedians. I want to expand. Oh, and speaking of, this was sent by uh, Professor Bear. Hey, Owen, I sent this message uh, PayPal, but it might not have gotten lost. See, I'll go back and find stuff, guys, because I it bums me out when I feel I miss things where people super chat me or PayPal. But just know that my response rate is the highest I've ever seen of anyone who does super chats or any of this stuff. But it's not going to be 100%. 
I, there's just no way to do that or else I wouldn't be able to do anything else that you guys actually, that, that a lot of you guys are just enjoy watching, you know? Anyway. Uh, and a great thing to do is uh, send stuff to Delev because she sends stuff to me. Uh, unbearablecomedy at gmail.com. All right. I'm growing up, which is weird. But a part of growing up is being smart with my money and playing the game better than daddy government would like me to do. My old boss gave me a huge leg up in terms of financial education. So far, I've thrown together a digital budget and mirrors the uh, envelope system. I've stayed ahead on my bills. I'm currently researching credit cards so I can build my credit through small stuff like groceries, gas, household needs, etc. By the way, I'm reading this out loud because so many people need to hear this. This is the education a lot of kids aren't given. I recommend the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's about basic skills and understandings that um, will, will be night and day in your life as far as wealth or poverty. And uh, that's one reason why I was talking about IQ yesterday and how I, I'm starting to not really be on board that theory that explains that much because so many people don't have any of the information to just, serve, I don't know. Because some guy wrote, said a comment on my YouTube that reminded me of uh, just how annoying racists are. He was like, oh, you, he was like, oh, I support you and you're funny or whatever. He's like, but uh, you might be sensitive about the IQ thing because your son's Hispanic. And I'm like, what you just say, nigga? <laughs> you know, like in my mind, I'm like, oh, so, so you're so dumb. You think that you saying that would, would affect me? Like I would now agree with you? That you're going to say that my son is racially stupid? My wife is half Mexican and she's, I don't know, probably top 2% IQ, 1%. Master's in engineering. Like her brain is so smart, it's like mind-blowing. Uh, and I, I'm starting to see, it's so much like socialism. That's why I always, I always say my issue with these uh, racial people isn't that they're like so much worse than any other collectivist group. I lump them in with socialists. Like I don't have this taboo where I'm like, he is a racist. You do not speak with me. Like none of that. I'm just like, oh, you don't see people as individuals. You see people as demographics, just like socialism. And that's weakness. And it's because you want free stuff. It's just a, I mean... The, 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 the audacity of that for someone to say that about my child is just because then what do you do? You start exchanging playing cards. I'm like, but I'm a quarter Ashkenazi Jew. So that cancels out his quarter. of It's like that's retarded. Anyway, back to the good, good people. This is where I was looking for help from you. I want some of my money to work for me. And I keep hearing you throw around the idea of people producing or helping produce comedy specials, which got me thinking. Do you have any information on how someone could uh, help produce a special or perhaps an even broader question would be how would someone go about investing their money in cool areas like stand-up? I know literally nothing about producing specials and what goes into it other than money, but I think it would be something really interesting to try once. I'm kind of young and I don't have a lot going on, just trying to keep myself busy and maintain a uh, positive trajectory. Much love, uh, Professor Bear. So... That's awesome. See, this I get emails like this quite a bit, actually, like people being like, I want to uh, invest. And frankly, I don't have a huge knowledge of financial stuff like that. Like, I don't know how to uh, set up a thing where people get points and blah, blah, blah. I would do something with this guy because I know him. Like, I've seen him super chat me before and stuff. And, uh, and we could do that. Like, we could set up a thing where you get a percentage of sales or something and, and and it would work that what that's called is a, a passive income and that's one reason why I've gotten a lot more stable financially is because of my specials uh it's passive income it's like the same with like if you own rental property it means you don't have to expend anything to get income when people say your money works for you that's what that means where those specials are now just on my website and, and whenever someone wants to see them, they just go buy a special and then that's making me money now. And the more specials I accumulate, the more that that happens. You know, there'll be a big spike when you first release a, release a special and then a slow decline and that goes down pretty hard, but it's always there. It's always there. Every single day, people buy all three of my specials. And that's a great, that's great advice for young people. 
where just figure out how you can how you can uh, set up a long-term thing. All right, so cool. And then the, here's the last one, then I'll start talking. Morning, Big Bear. In your recent podcast discussion discussing leftist pride movements, I think you missed a major part. It's a reaction to shame. No, I was, I was saying that, but I, this, is, this is a great point, but I'll read this. That people shouldn't feel shame for things they're born into, race, sexual orientation, height. Uh, they should feel shame for height. If you're under 6'4 and you're a man, never look at me in the eye. Pride and shame are the two extremes of the shame of the same spectrum, and they're missing the um, aris, aris de, I don't know how to, I've read this word so many times, but I don't really hear it very often. Aristotelian, mean, and swung too far from shame to pride. Neutrality, indifference is the proper response. Also, never been officially verified. May I please be Xenic Bear, Ska Bear? Welcome, Xenic Ska Bear. Never stop. Uh, love for you and your family from Canada. Yeah, I completely agree with that. That's why I say I have no white pride, but also no white shame. And I, and then, of course, people are like, oh, you have no pride where you come from? I go, no, but that's not white. I don't come from the color white. I come from my family, which came from their family, which came from Europe, which came from an ice age. Which, you know, it's not like, it's just silly. Racists are just as annoying as socialists, by the way. Just as annoying. And I'm not denying there's an IQ spectrum uh, bell curve differences in populations of people. I'm not one of those guys. I, it's not the Voldemort thing for me. It's not like we do not ever talk about racial differences in large populations. No, black people get fucking sickle cell anemia. White people are more likely to get skin cancer. You have different doses of medication, different probabilities of uh, hypertension. Like, of course, there's differences. Like the medical field is starting to get SJW because they can't admit that shit. That they, they will prescribe different doses of medicine based on your race and obviously on your sex. Like a 130 pound man and a 130 pound woman will get a different amount of medicine because their body metabolizes it differently. For, like fact. But at the same time, when people use that as a crutch to, uh, to explain things that are explainable in very different ways... Um, it's just as stupid as saying privilege or top 1% or any of that garbage. All right, let me read, uh, I'll read like three super chats and I'll keep going. Careful dude, the turtles totally lied about how fast they are and they are definitely after our weans. I'm just, I'm going to show you guys this right now because it's so relevant to what you just said. This is me and my brother yesterday. Uh, yeah, take a look guys. This is some real stuff here. This is the real deal. Oh, my brother wants everyone to know that I didn't get on on camera like the real scary bite. <laughs> like he wasn't reacting to this bite. He was reacting to one that I, I didn't get that was like legitimately a little intense. All right, brother. There we go. We are back. We we're trying to save a turtle and now we just kind of want to see it snap. That's a big snapper. Maybe it's not even a snapper. Oh no, it's a snapper. It's a snapper. Like, no other turtle around here gets that big. That'll cut your dick. The key to being around a snapping turtle is not to put your dick anywhere near its mouth. I think I can pick it up. Uh, can yeah, it, it can't move fast. Fast? Dude, I think they're secretly fast. Dude, that just... Ah. Whoa! Dude, I was just got hit by a car. Hit by a car. We are fucking with the, with the turtle. We literally were trying to, like, save it. And then we realized the turtles are not actually slow. I'm, not trying, I'm out. Dude, I told you, man. The snapper's a... Whoa! It's like a dragon. It's like a dragon. Brother, recap. I, you almost just lost the thumb, right? I almost lost the fucking thumb. I can't save that turtle. I almost just got hit by a car. We gotta go. Maybe the string will happen. Dude, I wish the rabbit had won. Fuck turtles. Look at, look at this lost thumb, dude. Like, did you see how bad? That was a lightning strike. Bro, I'm telling you. Like, my heart's pounding. I think turtles have had a propaganda PR team for so long saying that they're slow. Just so that we believe they're slow so they bite our dicks off. Yeah, he could have gotten his thumb, brother. Look at him. Fine, man. You're on your own, asshole. I mean, you've been here for 100 million years, but I wasn't... Is there a turtle whisperer? There's no way something. Dude, he's taking dude's dicks. I bet that I bet he's got nine dicks under. I thought it was smart. A really codependent chick would date a snapping turtle because she'd be like, he'll never let go. Kind of funny? I don't know. Dude, he was that was so fast. 
be hissed. They're not really slow. Yeah, so they're not really slow. Because we saw one all mangled on the road. And so my brother was like... And then we saw another one. He's like, I don't want that one to get hit by a car. And I wouldn't touch the thing. I'm like, dude, snapping turtles will bite your dick off. So... That's kind of the vibe for uh, Case Close Beers Open, where we're just kind of bumbling buffoons. Oh, and why do you rub your eyes, sleep more? Uh, or, I wear contacts and I have allergies. Assume less. But yeah, I do need to sleep more, but go fuck yourself as well. Happy birthday to the U.S. Army. Owen, have a beer on me to celebrate. Thank you, Amber. <laughs> um... Super excited. The thing I wrote on your wall about free will and determinism got published in blog called Red Pilled Religion and Catholic Blob. Congratulations, Jennifer Locken. Jennifer Locken, L-O-K-K-E-N. She's a great writer. I see her writing a lot, and it's really cool. Uh, someone said I may have to consider allergy meds. Well, I mean, I would if I was a, a full-blown gay guy, but fortunately, I'm not, so I'm not going to take allergy pills. I think I'm fine. I will let my immune system actually fight it so that I become stronger and not rely on some gay little pill. All right. Destroyer Bear. Hey, Big Bear, I posted a clip of you talking about why not to commit suicide. I almost didn't post it because I was worried YouTube would take it down. But then I asked myself, WWBBD, what would Big Bear do? Willing to die in this hill with you, buddy. Oh, dude, that's all, dude, that is so important to do stuff like that. Because that, it's just, compliance is... is the whole tool. So thank you for that. And I'll show you something very interesting about that whole suicide thing in one second. Can I join your cult, says Benjamin Murray. I'm totally into individualism and personal accountability. I just need a big bear to lead us. I'll hell big bear. It's not a cult, but yes, you can join as long as you do all of our cult things. Nimmer. Yo, big bro, make Arling a mod. We're kind of forever. All right. Um, Arling, say something so I can, I can mod you. Damn it, Artling. Are you out there creating art? You get, oh, there you are. All right, there we go. Sweet. Artling's great. Uh, definitely check out Artling's channel. He's, he's the guy who does like all my, my art now. It's crazy. The guy's just such a legend. He shot Reluctant uh, Warlord in Portland with me and Nimmer. And uh, it's great. If you want to buy it, it's at hugepianist.com. Weirdo, uh, hey Big Bear, Weirdo Bear here, love the streams, would you mind shouting out my Instagram, I do music weekly, of course, at Weirdo John, I'm so glad you're saying truth without regard for consequence, it's the only way guys, and and maybe I'll play the video I made yesterday, I feel like a lot of you guys already watched it though, but I just put it up on Instagram, it was just a clear and precise point I just tried to make about human motivation, about how some people, it's what you value, and it's, it is on a bit of a spectrum, but, all right, snapping turtles very fast, other turtles slow. Yeah, snapping turtles are just running around biting dicks. Uh, I love you from Benjamin Wilkin. Thank you, Benjamin. Um, as soon as I, we're done with this, I will look at that again, that little super chat, and I will start, I will start rubbing. <laughs> Tell the truth, Owen, Eric's name really isn't Nimmer. That's just what you keep calling him because your G doesn't work. That's hilarious. Um, just because my G, you want to hear something really hilarious? So my G on my computer didn't work for like a month. And so I kept having to copy and paste it. And it was like really annoying. It, it works again. That's why you got to stick through stuff. And, and, uh, the one thing about my one video where I said the definition of crazy is doing the same thing, expecting a different result outcome seemed to like piss people off, which is, is I thought was so benign. I'm like, guys. Why do we care so much about this? Turns out that was Albert Einstein said it about insanity and people get upset. And I understand why, because it implies that do, like perseverance is crazy. And I don't see it that way. Um, but I get what you're saying, because for me, practice makes perfect is not true. Perfect practice makes better. And also, it's all incremental. If, you, if you're doing stuff and you see no improvement at all, you're doing it wrong. You're, you're, you're creating um, bad habits and uh, bad muscle memory, and it's actually worse. 
Like, for example, if you uh, go to college and, and, re- and learn about economics, you actually know less when you're done. Isn't that wild? If you test someone on economics, like actual economics, before going to college and after, you actually learn less. So just, that's a fake Einstein quote. Yeah, I'm, guys, I'm not interested at all in that whole thing. Again, Einstein was speaking out against quantum physics. He has been proven wrong on this. Okay, f- fuck you guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you guys a video of, of me explaining what that means. I did it on Instagram and I wasn't even going to include it. But uh, of course it's crazy to just... All right, there we go. This is just a random thing that's kind of silly, but um, kind of explains it without just words because apparently words don't always work with people. Um... And I even have a pinned tweet on the video being like, oh, by the way, this is insanity and crazy. It's a little different. But anyway, enjoy the video. And people are like, no, I will focus on this one thing that doesn't matter more. It doesn't matter at all, actually. It's just, I mean, your point was like a really good point that a lot of people should hear. But what does crazy really mean? All right. This is an example of crazy. Ready? Here we go. What has four paws and is the happiest boy in the whole wide world? (laughs) I thought he was going to come on world. I don't know why I thought that. I didn't train him to do that. That makes no sense. Why would he come on? Who has four paws and is the happiest boy in the whole wide world? Nothing's changed since the last time I tried it. I truly think I'm losing my mind. World! World, 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 George, come here, buddy, George, I guess it wasn't world. I hope that, I hope that was helpful. Uh, and I just don't have a lot of interest in it anymore. I was trying to respond to people on, in the comment section about it and being like, well, no, like the compulsion of doing the same thing. It's, it's social, like trying socialism is crazy because every time you try it, it ends in uh, starvation and genocide. But this time it'll work, right? That's, that's what crazy is. Where you say, okay, every time I drop an apple off, off this, this roof, it just falls down there. This next time it'll go up. That's, that's crazy. And, and, it's all good. Do you follow Jordan Peterson? Yes, I do. All right. What we got here? Excellent stream today. Crushing it. I've laughed audibly at my desk several times already. Hashtag Ninja2020. Thank you, Coder Bear. Oh, check out our uh, our app, by the way, the Coder Bear and a bunch of other bears rocked. It's unbearablezap.com. Not zap. Unbearables app. Dot com. You can register your name and have fun. It's a chat. You just chat all the time. It's great. Kiki Bear. Bear, is the cult check is, do they oppress women? Nope. Do they tell you not to talk to other people unless you're converting them? Nope. Hashtag not a cult. The biggest one is, does your cult leader want to have sex with your wives and children? And I have no interest. No offense to any of you, but that's the last thing you have to worry about is me fucking you guys. <laughs> Because every cult seems to just have some dude that's just trying to fuck everybody. And that's always how you know if it's a cult versus just a, uh, a fun hang. Drop bears are quicker. Worst cult ever. I mean, I don't know how I feel about uh, worst cult ever. Like, I, I don't have pride that it's a cult. I don't even I always say it's a bad cult. I just said, damn, I have to find a new cult. Sorry, Golden Bear, but I'm not really sorry. I'm not going to... I'm not going to fuck it, dude. All right, check this out. Kathy Griffin calls out Kevin Hart for not attacking Trump. Because they're scared another one may leave the plantation. You know what I mean? We might have to get the Fugitive Idea Slave Act enforced. Get the, the balls on this tranny lady. To, Kevin Hart is the most successful comedian alive. I, my first set I ever did was opening for him in college. I was 19. He's a good guy. The fact that he just isn't condemning a guy 
is is allowing these people, these awful people, (laughs) to think that they have a right to criticize Kevin Hart. That's what racism looks like, guys. It's like, boy, you you know your place. You you say what we tell you to say. And Kevin would be like, Kathy, I'm Kevin Hart. You're a tranny-looking warlock cunt. It's the arrogance of it. The arrogance of it of being like, oh. yeah, Kevin Hart does what he wants. Kevin Hart does what the fuck he wants, Kathy Griffin. And they're just scared they're going to lose another one. And by another one, I mean slave, black, black idea slaves to the left. Like they lost uh, Kanye simply for saying, saying you don't have to be a Democrat. They're like, oh, he's rattling his chains. And then Candace Owens. And uh, there's another one. Another one got off the plantation. And now they're, uh, they're, they're worried about, about Hart, Kevin Hart. Yeah, Kathy Griffin's face is, is just crazy. I don't know if I could... It's almost like it was designed by uh, like Wes Craven. Like, she... Do I have to do this when I say she? Like, she... Looks like the type of person that, that comes, that like lives in a well. You know, she's like, hey. oh, Dennis Robbins off the plantation. Um, yeah. All right. Anyway, moving on. Yeah. I'm not counting like the Larry Elders and the Thomas Souls and all those guys. Cause they were all, they never were. I mean, in college, Saul used to be a socialist and then realized that the minimum wage was designed to destroy black people. Oh, snap. I'm going to play you guys something. Oh, snap. Man, there's so much just knowledge that we're not taught in school that it's like, it's laughable. Where is that? Did I? Oh, snap. I'm going to start saying, oh, snap. But like really spell it out like that. Like, oh, snap. Larry Elder gives this awesome speech. I was like, oh, snap. Right now, I guarantee people are like, enough. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. Like, what you just said isn't even funny. <laughs> it's, not even, it's not even funny. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm in a pretty silly mood today. Where? I, I know I emailed it to myself. Because if I don't email myself stuff, it's just gone. And I know it's gone. Even when people write me a note, I'll like, I'll like take a picture of it and email it to myself. I don't know. Moving on. It's not, it's not even funny. Oh, Eric says, uh, fuck Taylor Swift. That is all. Dude, Taylor Swift, that cover you played me, Nimmer, is, is so bad. It's so bad. I'm not willing to say fuck Taylor Swift. Because, uh... It's like us whites have to treat uh, T Swift like you guys have to treat, you know, your guys like Al Sharpton or whatever. Like he can say something unbelievably insane, and you guys are like, but you know, it's Al Sharpton. But that cover is just like, it's unbelievably bad. I, it, it's I don't know. It's all good. I'm not going to, I'm not going to just rip on, on TS, but I also am. All right, what do we got here? Oh, this one, Jamie Foxx accused of slapping woman with his penis. By the way, there's no way this is anything. Just FYI, it's from 2002 <laughs> and he's doing what is, I think more people should do. He's now going to sue her. But the funny thing about this is like no one would even question that that's possible because of our assumption of black dicks. Like everyone's like, oh, that's toy. Yeah, he could have just pulled it out and just slapped her with his big dick. Imagine if it was an Asian guy. Like like if it was an Asian, a famous Asian guy, no one would, would believe it for a second. Like the concept that someone could use their dick as a slapping weapon is like only black people can do that. Like there's no other group of people. Like maybe a really tall white. 
But uh, even the whites, like if you just had a normal, um, it's like a normal sized white, like 5'7 or 5'8. You'd be like slapped with his dick. But Jamie Foxx, you're like, yeah, he might have like lassoed her with it. You know? I don't know. I think that's a really funny thing, though. Jamie Foxx accused of slapping woman with his penis. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the Me Too movement is uh is dying is dying like quickly. All right, this is from Trailblazer. The way to heal is to see the truth. The way to deal with the truth is with laughter. Thanks for the laughs and great songs, bro. Oh, anytime, and thank you for the kind words. All right, I wrote some stuff I want to talk about. Oh, yeah, I want to research Red Snappers and Snapdragons and see if they also were like want to get your dick. And another thing, for, for people saying that... Um, if, if you think something and someone's like, oh, you're paranoid, you're looking too into it, bro, blah, blah, blah. This is how you know whether or not you're doing that. Like, if you go back and watch my first two Joe Rogan appearances, not the third one where Crazy Kurt was was ranting like like a, like a schizophrenic donkey. Uh, the first two, it's like, and back then people were like, "Oh, you, you Owens, this right wing nut." No, they liked it. Like people liked it, but they'd be like, they think that I was paranoid. If you go back. The, only, the way out, you know how I was wrong? I was wrong the other direction. I was wrong because I assumed people wouldn't go after more statues than just the Confederate statues. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I was wrong the other direction. I was wrong assuming people aren't as crazy as they really are. And that's how you can learn about yourself is with, uh, with time travel. And time travel is just from like, going back and objectively looking and being like, okay, what was I right about? What was I wrong about? What assumptions panned out? What assumptions didn't pan out? Is there anything I can learn about the nature of humans to help uh, uh, predict things? And that's the direction things are going these days. And I was watching, uh, I was watching uh, Ruben and, and Rogan yesterday and it's the, the quote unquote intellectual dark web I'm, I, I respect these guys, yada, yada, all that stuff. But like, there's something inherently contradictory about it. Like a, a collective of individualists. I just find that to be kind of funny. Where it's like, oh, we're the intellectual dark web. We're like a, we're a group about no groups. And you're like, okay. I don't know. I just feel like... Uh, People actually in like a dark web don't tell you. <laughs> dark web. Yeah, and they're all white guys, mostly Jews. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> I mean, and I'm not talking, I'm not trying to start beef. Like, that's so gay. Like, I, like I still like these guys and respect all of them, but it's just like, Ruben makes me laugh sometimes when he's like, I mean, who would have guessed? That Sam Harris, Ben Shapiro, and myself can all sit around and have a conversation. It's like, oh, you mean a bunch of rich Jews living in L.A.? I don't know. Everyone? <laughs> like, that you, that's three of the people in one of the most specific groups imaginable. Okay, now throw in, like, just a random dude and see how much you guys get along. See how much you guys get along with Sam Harris. You know what I'm saying? Most dudes I know, if they talked with Sam Harris, would be like, I hate that guy. It's just, he's like, Donald Trump is exponentially worse than everyone. And the reason I think that the, it doesn't line up, and I've tried so hard to like Sam Harris just because I think that I, I respect people with courage in a time of cowardice. And, uh... Man, the way you can really figure somebody out sometimes is what, what is their goal? Every time he tries to describe his ultimate reality, and I don't want to straw man him, I don't want to say what he's thinking, but it always involves stuff. It's always like everyone would have all the things they want. And I'm like, dude, so many people don't think that way. I'm going to play you guys something that I made yesterday. Screw it. If you want to watch it, it's on YouTube, but I think it's very relevant to what I'm saying right now so that I don't mischaracterize people. I'm trying to get better at that stuff. 
but there's something really gay about a bunch of people that are trying to give this whole idea that a, a brand dude you can't brand yourself as an individual it doesn't work the whole reason people always loved rogan is because he wasn't a brand what is he is he a fighter weed smoker philosopher who talks to scientists does stand up and can beat anyone up like where where could you put that and that's the beauty of joe rogan that's the beauty of jordan peterson where he's like he's a he's a uh a canadian depressed guy who's really smart who teaches at a college and is just refuses to talk about to agree to pronouns and he's obsessed with lobsters and uh art from the soviet union and he references solzhenitsyn constantly like that isn't a brand that's why people are drawn to these people and then the problem that happens and, and for people to be like oh well i mean he has millions of listeners and you don't and and it's like, dude, I'm not even criticizing Joe right now, but also the amount of listeners don't matter. Like the reason people are drawn to these people is because they're just them. And so my point that I'm just trying to make is like, it, just watch out for inherent contradictions. You know, I see them in myself sometimes. Like somebody uh, called me out for something great yesterday where I was saying science was religion. Someone said, uh, he says on a computer, and I'm like, great catch, bro. I had to differentiate between science, big S and science, little s. Science is a process versus science as a, as a why versus science as a how. Like science is how, not why. Science, what can be why with like trying to figure out uh, linear, like causal relationships, but not when it comes to a, you know, I don't know. I think... Someone, who was it? it who was the gay atheist guy that I, I kind of like? Chris R Hitchens said, be, be wary of people who, try, who want everyone to like them. And I'm so, I'm, I believe that 100%. I don't, like the people that want everyone to like them are so, they, it never works. It just doesn't happen where it's like, you know, I see everyone's point here. I believe in socialism and I also believe in free market. It's like, you can't believe in both. You can't <laughs> like that isn't possible. And there's a reason. And, and some of these people think that it's so weird and it's almost like um, uh, brainwashing when everyone lines up on a lot of issues. It'd be like, well, the right, the right up, you know, they always have to step in line and follow this stuff. And you're like, dude, no, it's based on basic principles where if you're a gun owner and you want to keep your gun, it's kind of hard to be a socialist because they want to take your guns because socialism has never been tried without disarming the population. We can continue with that where it's like, what's another issue? I don't know. Who cares? I'm not going to sound like I'm being a dick. Hang on. I get so frustrated when Joe always fence sits. Well, he's good at his job. You know what I mean? That's why I didn't want to make this about Joe because I have a lot of respect for Joe. But it's it's weird to see the progression. It's almost like the uh, the book uh, Why Nations Fail, where you almost see it in people, where you're like, once someone gets a shtick and they start branding and they think about how many more ads they can get and all that stuff, what what people originally liked about them starts to wane. You know, as someone just wrote, as now everyone fashionably believes Rogan is spineless. About time. I don't know. Yeah, but that's cowardice. I believe. I believe that too. I don't know. I shouldn't have even thought about it without finishing my thoughts. But fuck it. My brand is saying crazy shit. Ha <laughs> ha. Just branding. I, I, will, I will never take ads. All right, so Christopher writes, the reason why I have a hard time taking Sam Harris or Richard Dawkins seriously is that I can't imagine them doing any physically hard work. They're indoor cats. Also, did you get my poem, Bourdain's Shame? I, I'll check out the, the poem, but that's a great point. Dom says, I do like Rogan. Dude, I, that's why I keep saying I like Rogan because I don't want this to be misinterpreted. I, I don't want that to be misinterpreted. I just, 
the more I do research and the more I, I learn about stuff, the more I find it hard to just listen to people who say the same thing over and over again without any evolution of their thoughts. And, and, and Ruben was kind of doing that yesterday. Like he just keeps saying, you know, things are really changing. People are coming together and starting to see it, it, it's not okay. I'll show you what's really happening. And my, t from my perspective, this is what I think is happening. And it's not, it's not. All right. Let me find this. This is called how to understand crazy people. And I'll just start it a little bit in because you can just watch it if you want. But uh, where is it? There who says, I'm so confused. Bernie Sanders says guns, prisons, and greed are the problem. And then his solution is that he wants more of our income or he will send a man with a gun to our house to put us in a jail. These people are crazy. Nope, he's not crazy. Neither are the people that say Caitlyn Jenner is woman of the year, even though she hasn't been a woman for a full year yet. Or of course, my favorite, Trump is literally Hitler. Now literally give him all of your guns because a 17 year old in Florida who looks like the guy from American Pickers said so. So what's their motivation? What makes someone truly say something so paradoxical like only white people can be racist? Or gender doesn't exist, but it does. And there's a wage gap that doesn't exist, but it does. They are motivated by the same thing as you or I. You assume everyone wants to figure out the right answer. This was a given in your equation and it was a mistake. When someone says, what is two plus two? We all say four, but then it's revealed that if you say five, you will get a piece of candy. I would respond, but it's four. And they'd say, but candy. And I'd say, but it's four. Now there's a type of person that likes candy more than being right at math. Someone says, what is two plus two? They'd say candy. I'd say, but it's four. And they'd say, but it's candy. See, they're both rational. It just depends on what you value. We don't value the same thing. Candy can be social approval, false moral superiority, financial incentives, likes on Facebook, keeping your job, etc. There are millions of people who think it's crazy that anyone would say four. You can't touch truth. You can't eat truth. Truth isn't sweet. It sure isn't candy. What kind of person would give up candy for nothing? It's candy. But if you take the candy over what you know to be true, the penalty for accepted lies will only get worse. Being called names that no one expects to be justified with any evidence hurts. I'm not a homophobe. My dog is gay, you will plead. And they will say, so you now think dogs are gay. And then you break. It's five, okay? It's five. Just tell me I'm good. Tell me I love my gay dog. For most of the world, the penalty isn't a thumbs down on YouTube. It's imprisonment or death for not saying five. So it's extra silly to break under such little pressure. The good news is your friendships, your relationships, your business associates will prove dramatically if, you're, if you hold your ground and you say four. When people know you are the type of person who takes truth over candy, they will allow you much more leeway to make mistakes and evolve your ideas. Your friendships will be much stronger. Your business partners will trust you more, which will lead to more and more opportunities, which will lead to more candy. All because they know that when the candy man comes knocking, you will tell them that you're busy going to the dentist. That's why the candy people all have to have the exact same opinion on every single issue. Have you noticed that? Everything has to line up or they're out because they don't trust each other. That's why the candy people all have to exact the same opinion because they know that anyone with a bigger Snickers bar or a couple more candy corn will get your loyalty. And yet your history with that person means nothing if there's more candy corn. When I think a friend is wrong, I mean horribly wrong, embarrassingly wrong, wrong so my blood boils. I wanna argue his point. 
but my respect for him as a person does not waver. I expect they do the same for me. If I end up realizing that he was right all along, once all my angles and all my arguments have been extinguished, I thank him. Close call. I could have kept being wrong. Thanks, good buddy. When I know he knows what's right and says what will get him candy, that's a sad day for me. Because then I realize the next time we play craps, he may have loaded dice so I can't trust a victory or learn from a loss. But he really likes candy. So I hope that helps you navigate the current chaos. This is much deeper than politics. This is a fundamental issue of a person's motivations and goals. There are a vast amount of people who would rather take candy, even if their agreed upon lie will give them a toothache in the very near future. They would just say, but the future isn't now, homophobe. So when they say something like submit to tolerance, and you know they are smart enough to understand that what they just said is a hilarious oxymoron, just know they don't care at all. Words are just a means to candy. In their mind, they just said whatever will get to them candy. And once you realize that, you don't take as much offense to what they're saying. You don't take it personally. You don't think that the world is going mad because it isn't. It's following its rational progress based on human motivation. Some people say four, some people say candy. And once you know that, hopefully you get less stressed. I know I did. Much love. Be good. And don't eat too much candy. All right, so I hope that uh, that was helpful. Because I know a lot of people are constantly confused. Constantly confused. They're like, but if we said I'm going to drink black tears and smile, that would be seen as racist. But if they, they don't care at all. And it makes rational sense. It's just, it just, all that, all that, you just have to ask yourself, what, what is the motivation? If someone's like, listen, say the sky is, the sky is purple and I'll give you a bigger Snickers bar. And Coddington had a great joke in there. He said, uh, like Jamie Foxx's dick, an extra large Snickers bar. But, uh, yeah, that's all it is. Someone going, yeah, but candy. And so when I hear People that I know know better do the yeah, but candy stuff. It makes me not trust anything. I'm just like, oh, so you just are full of shit. I don't know. And it's when it's accepted. It's, it, it, it's one thing if someone just continuously gets something wrong from like laziness or whatever. It's another when you know they're full of shit and you're like, dude, people die because of this. You know, like hearing... These guys, they always distance them, themselves from like Molyneux and Tommy Robinson and all that stuff. And they never say why. It's always like, oh, you know, I've had controversial guests and then people try to put me in a, in a corner. And I, I just, I thought, let, let Molyneux talk. Like, let him hang himself with his own rope and stuff. And I'm like, what the hell did he say? What the hell's wrong with that guy? You have on socialists. Yeah, Dave Rubin said that, yeah. That's just throwing people under the bus. And right now, Tommy Robinson is in a jail with the government trying to have him murdered. Uh, someone just said, put me on with Rogan. I'll, I'll, no, he, that's the thing. Is, is Rogan does this dance where if you have like this big point to make. I'm not, no, I'm not assuming anything about Rogan. No, that's, that's stupid. I'm not even going to go down the, these thoughts anymore. All right, let's read a couple more of these. And then I'm going to do some, uh, I'll open some packages, play a little music, and then we'll call it a day. <clears throat> oh, oh, right on. Hey, Owen, it's Addy. Did you mention David's show about Bourdain? Thank you for reminding me. I would have absolutely forgot that. This is uh, the power of being an Asian because you get little dicks and you can say anything you want. David Cho says, rest in peace and also fuck you. You are my hero and a coward. Um, yeah, like, and everyone's like, oh, he's great. This is so beautiful what he wrote. And it was beautiful what he wrote. It was really honest. But, you know, a big old 
a big old white boy like me says that in a, I don't know. How oh, someone said, get off talking about Rogan. Why is Rogan the only one no one will go against? Because he doesn't attack unprovoked. If he ever attacked me or called me names on his thing, I would do a whole episode just on him. But he's a code guy. He has ethics. And he's got that like old school vibe of like, where you just want to be like, okay, respect until there is no respect. It's almost like a like fighting thing. It's like you don't want to overextend with somebody like that who follows a, who follows a code because they'll just dismantle you. Except when Crowder talks about pot. Yeah, but they're talking about... But they were arguing about pot. That's fine. Like I, that, That's not a friendship ender. Friendship enders to me are like when someone intentionally is doing something for money or social approval that's, that hurts society badly and people are like end up in prison and shit. Uh, Rogan and tax individual ideas. Yeah, which is great. Uh, Candace Owens and Rogan arguing about climate change was painful. Uh, explain what I won't attack unless the subject is weird. Jay, explain what you mean by that. Like, what what did you find painful about it? Because I know what I found painful about it, but what do you find painful about it? What? And I I don't know. I just feel like right now I'm going into he with no sins cast the first stone territory. Like I don't want to be a hypocrite. So, because I've definitely overreached and attacked people, but yeah. Uh, Candace Owens says right way too much was on Candace's side for that. Yeah, me too. Rogan apologized to Crowder. Yeah, he did that publicly. That was good. Candace didn't have any substance to back up her arguments. She confirmed his bias. Candace was a bit annoying. It felt disingenuous. She says like too much. What was painful was the working through your dad's stuff publicly says Raymond was to you. It was uh, it was relieving to some people. It was painful to some people. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with pain. Pain's growth. I uh, I'm comfortable with pain now. I'm comfortable with it. I wish I could like Candace. Seems like she has a lot to learn. A bit annoying at the moment. Rogan is a fraud. I don't think Rogan's a fraud. I think Rogan will. I got to stop talking about this shit because it's so like, I, I'm just rambling a little. I like, it's not that I'm scared or anything. I just like to have a, cre- a precise point before I just ramble. I think that sometimes people do, um, hang on, Rogan and us follow Bushido, the honor of the warrior. Yeah. Well, I just don't think that it, it's good to just attack someone who doesn't attack you, who isn't doing something like crazy. Rogan gets off on watching people get high or drunk. She was Little League. Joe has his heels dug in on climate. You like to have a croissant first. Comfortability with pain is freedom. I agree. Not having a side isn't a bad thing. No, I agree. But there's something going on that I want to address, but I can't quite articulate it yet. It might take me, I don't know, 50 years. But there's something about the dark web that I don't understand. Where it's like this super group, you know, the Avengers, the Avengers of, of individualism. And it's like, well, once you start doing that, it becomes a contradiction immediately. Rogan seeing the dad conspiracy theorist just saying he was wrong, I think it was enlightening. Joe was a big conspiracy guy and then started learning. This is one thing I'll, I'll give Joe to his credit is uh, he knows his audience is full of conspiracy guys. And so for him to say that a lot of conspiracies are bullshit I mean, it takes balls. Hang on. Eric Weinstein posted a video on his channel explaining the IDW name as a kind of meta troll. Well, if he explains it, is it still a meta troll? I find all that very confusing. I might not be smart enough for that. People keep talk, taking the candy, deserve the toothache. Keep being you, Big Bear. Uh, Rogan drops the hallucinogenics. Maybe he'd be okay. All right, I'm starting to feel bad about even bringing, like, open this up about Joe. Because Joe has done a lot for me and opened a lot of people to my mind, but there's something gay happening. 
There's something gay happening. Hey, Joe, Joe Stevenson. If Owen isn't smart enough, oh boy, who is? There's a good amount of people smarter than me. I thought the dark web was the name liberals gave to the people they didn't want to hear. I don't fucking know. There's just something gay happening with it. Shapiro and Rogan said the dark web thing was BS in an interview. Dude, people have said I'm in the fucking thing. No need to talk about Joe. It is what it is. Well, I talk about everything every day. That's the one thing I'll fucking uh, say is when people are like, why do you care about stuff? I don't know. Why do you do what you do for a living? Asshole. <laughs> like I do two hours a day talking about shit I care about. So when people are like, why do you care? It's like, I don't know. So wh- why do I care about Jamie Foxx slapping someone with a dick or fucking snapping turtles? I just care about things. Rogan says he stops listening when someone mentions Soros. Dude, how crazy is it that Roseanne apologized to Soros? I think Ruben was optimistic because of touring with Dr. Peterson. I was there the other night. It had a great vibe. Oh, fuck yeah. No, I love Ruben. I love both those guys. That tour looks amazing. But, um, I don't know. It's just there's something gay going on. And Joe bashing always been my thing. Let's me down a lot. Well, typical Joe bashing is gay. It's usually done by dudes that are jealous of him or uh, really want to be his best friend. And since they, he never responds to them, they start like hating him. That's why I'm like really against a lot of Joe criticisms because I see so much of what he does is being good. And then people give him so much shit that he doesn't deserve, that I just have like very low ability of, of uh, criticizing him, even when he does crazy shit. But sometimes I'm just like, universal basic income is socialism. But fuck it. I Like him with weed legalization is me with like hating socialism. So I know that may be a bit of a blind spot to me, but I can't imagine anything being worse than socialism. So when people like back socialism, that's literally like backing rape in my mind. Joe's a solid dude. I respect that man, man, even if I disagree with some of his views. Yeah, the way my respect isn't about your views. It's how you got your views. It's like if you got your views because you hang out with a bunch of liberals in L.A. and uh, you just won't question anything outside of what they think. I don't respect your views. Uh, Socialism is super AIDS cancer. It is. So whenever people are like, yeah, I mean, I'm for universal health care. I'm for uh, universal basic income. I'm like, do you, have you looked into what that requires and what will happen? I don't know. Is Rogan the warrior white knight or just a court jester? I face the same issue as that. I don't know. I always am like, I'm a comedian and then I'll do some serious thing. And I'm like, I don't fucking know. Today's a weird stream. That's okay. Time travel equals music and food takes you to the moment. That's it. I like that, Raymond. Community Bear, we usually put high expectations on those we admire only to be disappointed in them when they don't live up to our expectations. I love people for what they do, not always what they say. Yeah, and I've experienced that too, and that's one reason I don't want to become that in any way. Some of my biggest fans became my biggest enemies, and to watch the process of that was very enlightening to me Uh, about how I can potentially look at people um, and over-criticize them. Because people that used to like send me roses, literally, like became people that like despise me. And, um, And so I always try to keep that in my mind, you know, where it's like the people that I look up to the most don't like always question when I think that, um, always question when I, when I want to critique someone that for a good amount of time, I thought that they were awesome because there's a good chance that I've increased them above human in my head, which is basically like, don't, you know, don't, um, don't worship false idols. That's kind of like what that means. Always remember everyone, everyone's a man. And so a guy like Joe Rogan, I've listened to so much in, in, in my headphones and he's, and he's opened my eyes to so many things. And I've, I have so much respect for him standing up for so many things that I don't trust my criticisms of him because there's no way I don't put him too high 
where like everything's a letdown. So that's something I really have to watch for in my life. And I think most people have that. And I think it's something to really watch for where, where what you love or what you really look up to, like, like just know they're just still a dude and they're going to say fucking retarded shit. All right. Christopher, the reason why I have a hard time taking Sam Harris or Rich. Oh, I read that one. I think they're lumping online media together because it is all new and theirs is so no classification for it yet. I see. No, I see it. And dude, I'm for it. I like everybody that's do that's in it, except for I think Sam Harris is a weirdo. But uh, other than that, I mean, Shapiro's the man. I don't even know. If, is he in this dark web situation? I feel like he'd find it fairly gay. But Peterson is, you know, such a hero of mine that I have to check myself too, where I'm like, all right, don't put him too high. Because then you'll fucking get mad at him. That's always what happens. Ruben's awesome. Rogan's awesome. The Weinstein brothers are awesome. They're, they're wicked spectrum-y guys, but they're still awesome. Um, do you think Ruben wants to stay in good graces with the Sam Harris crowd? And that's why he won't back Molyneux fully. You don't even have to back Molyneux. Just don't use people like him or Tommy Robinson as examples of like extremists that you've had on your show. That's what pisses me off. And you know what? That's not about, that's not what I just described. This is a valid fucking criticism. Fuck that shit. Anybody that's like, you know, I mean, I'll have on controversial figures like Stefan Molyneux and, and Tommy Robinson. And I just want to get the conversation started, even though I don't, I don't, you know, support them in any way. I'm like, you didn't even have to bring them up. And now that you did, why don't you fucking explain why Tommy Robinson's such a bad guy or why Molyneux's fucking uh, way of thinking is so devastating. So that's my problem because that shit fucks up people's lives. That's why I'm on it when people do that with me. You know, when people do that with me, with like that Sam Tripoli nonsense the other day that was so tiny, but when he's like, I can't defend Owen Benjamin, but I'm like, you don't have to defend me. But you don't have to bring up that you don't defend me randomly in front of millions of people because I know what you're doing. You're saying, I'm still in the power club. Because Malinu doesn't give a fuck about power and neither is Tommy Robinson. Tommy Robinson is most likely going to give up his life for the safety of English children. So you may not want to fucking do that shit. Like try to, try to be like, oh, this far right extremist. It's like, no, dude. Not only should you not mock him, it's like you should honor him. Malinu's views are extreme. All right, this is cool. Tell me which one is extreme and why, Bear Gribble. Tell me which, uh, which, ex which, which one, just be very specific. And, th and that's the only way we can really figure this out because, hang on, imagine how crushed to hear some shit about JVP. He's even afraid of that. Uh, well, that's why I'm preparing for this because I, it will happen and that's fine. Uh, I can't stand to think of poor Tommy being murdered. Oh, I know it's insane. I'm just looking for that one dude. I want to see it. What is, what his point is. My news views are based on data. It's not extreme. I know his interpretation can be false, but it's not extreme. No government. I'm ANCAP, by the way. I don't see how that's extreme. Uh, it's, it's his whole, this is how this dude thinks. He has a base principle in his mind that, um, that you shouldn't exert force on others. It's a principle he follows. And the government has a monopoly on that. That's all it is. And he's basically just saying like, and dude, he doesn't lose arguments. I listen to this shit. Anarchism is pretty extreme, no? In our world, it's considered extreme because we're raised by governments. And I'm not an ANCAP, but I will say this. I've told these guys that I think there's a decent chance. Hang on, ever see the video of Joe Rogan saying he would lie to his own mother if the government showed him some alien shit? No. I think it may be because I just can't picture it in my mind. And, and for someone as free as me, I may not be able to understand that, you know? Do you support the government wanting to kill me? We're no longer friends. Stefan Molyneux. 
Right, dude, I get it though. I get that. I, I literally understand that, but I can't go to that. And I don't know why. I just can't get my mind around it. I, I have never seen an example of it working. The math works. The math works. You know? The contradictions of, um, of, it, uh, of uh, the government force is obvious. But human nature is fucked up. And, and it's almost like, do you guys remember that Indiana Jones scene where someone, where someone comes out? He's like, whoo, 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 just this elegant swordsman. And he's like getting ready to fight Indiana Jones. And Indiana Jones just shoots people. Or shoots the guy and he just dies. That's how I picture anarcho-capitalism sometimes. Granted, I haven't read enough Rothbard. And a lot of my boys are like, dude, a lot of this shit is, uh, is explainable. And I'm like, okay, but just hear me out. Human nature is tribal and tribes do exert force. And that's always happened. And I just don't know how to get around that. It's almost like, uh, I don't know. I just can't see it. People question Malinu's motives for his constant racial focus. He is just as guilty of identity politics as the left, but he's on the other side. No. You got you to gotta explain that. Because I've listened to a lot of Malinu. And I watched him struggle hard with some of those concepts because he discovered the motivation for certain immigration waves by the left. And it was certain groups of people are more likely to vote left. People with much lower IQs. And he was like, fuck. And that was how he's responding. And that's a debate. Dude, what... The data is real. My, th my thing is I don't know how much that has a factor and how much it has to do with your upbringing and all that shit. I don't think some of that settled at all. Jews are a hell of a force and they ask, are you a tribe? I don't understand that. The Jew thing, I'm not on board with at all. When people are like, Jews are running everything, I'm like, You're, you sound retired. Uh, Malanu is critically thinking, agree or not. Yeah, and he, and he admits when he's wrong a lot. That's another thing. And so he'll be like, yeah, I was, I was full-blown wrong on that one. Um, I've never seen Malanu as racist. He's not that extreme. He's a secret of knowledge and truth. Dude, it's so much easier to, 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 to say it's extreme that the government takes half of our money and in return just fucks with us and divides us. And the government sucks. I don't know. Jews do control the weather. That's true. That's the one thing that is for sure true. Uh, name a black racist, please. Uh, tons. There's tons of... Eric Nimmer. <laughs> My thing with Malinu is how can three hours after an event you do a three-hour video called The Truth About... Right. Well, that whole branding thing is a little weird. The Truth About is a, is a, very, uh, is a very smart move because it's just intriguing. But yeah... That, that's a big, I, I could see how people can be like, oh, that's a bit of a fucking, that's a bit of a, a claim. Yeah, the truth about something that happened three hours ago. That's a funny point. Uh, guys, Malanu can fall in love with his own thinking as with all high IQ people. Just recognize it and you'll be fine. Totally. That's 100% true. There's a narcissism and a depression with high IQ. And, uh, that's because sometimes you can only really debate yourself because other people either aren't interested or they won't be able to follow, um, you know, givens or logic or all that stuff. So in your mind, you're just working things out and then you start becoming a, uh, your own um, call of mirrors. And that happens all the time. Academics are plagued with that shit. I was raised with a bunch of them. And they're the type of people that are so smart that they become crazy, you know? All right, let's, uh, let's get happy. I'm being a fucking, this is getting a little just weird. If Tommy's hurt and dies, one will catch on fire. It'd be so ugly, I can't believe the craziness. Or it won't, which will be even another whole thing. It may not. I thought people would be way more pissed when he first got arrested. I wrote a, you know, we wrote a fucking song. I took a lot, you know, tried to spread the word, all this shit. The amount of people that didn't do shit blew my mind. I think that's why I'm a little cranky today. I'm like kind of fucking pissed. 
I think that's why I'm kind of taking shots at people that I'm like kind of friends with. Because I'm like, dude, people listen to you guys. Why the fuck aren't you talking about in, like things that are happening to your own people? It just is very disappointing. It's very disappointing to me, personally. Because I know that there is a financial uh, incentive to not back Tommy Robinson because the fucking big money interests don't like little troublemakers like him. I get it. But uh, it's it's just gay. I'm I'm just so dark today. I'm in such a fucking grumpy mood. I just realized that. I believe Sam Tripoli would change his stance if you explained it right. Have you talked to him at all? Now I don't need to explain shit to Sam Tripoli. I don't even dislike him. But it's just like he didn't need to do that. Well, what could I? You have to understand, I've shot sketches with Sam. I've been on a bunch of shows with Sam. I've had Sam's back. I've gotten drunk with Sam. I'm from a similar area as Sam. Sam's never to my face once ever said anything bad about me. So there's no reason for him to do that except for this fucking weird thing that's happening now where anybody that that steps out of this, of some of these big issues, the, the craziest is abortion. The fact that I speak out against abortion is the, is the thing that was just the, the nail in my Hollywood ca- uh, coffin. You know, the trans kid thing kept me in the fold with those guys still because it's so insane to them even. It's so new. It's so nutty that they were like, you know, a ton of people closed their, the doors on me and, and, and I lost my agent and all that shit. But still, like... Some of these dudes would still be like, oh man, we got to support oh man. But if you go against abortion, they're all out. It's just like this fucking meow. But I mean, how do you go with something that crazy that you don't believe in? Okay, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. People saying that Mount is extreme. It's way more extreme that the government forcibly takes our money to fund a system that kills babies. How does no one see that? So when people say, oh, Malin is extreme because he is discussing some scientific results. Okay, how about this? The government with the threat of death takes your money and gives it to Planned Parenthood who kill about 140,000 unborn people a year. So that is, So that's less extreme like when you just say reality, it's a, it's, it's a horror. And then some dude in Canada has a fucking live stream and just has some ideas. What if he's just, he might be just a little intellectual and he's coming up with theories that can't be uh, put into practice. Maybe. But unlike socialism, his theory is based on universal consent, not force. And that's why I love that dude. Because like Malinu's whole thing, I can't see it, to be completely honest. But his whole non-aggression principle is based in the opposite of rape. Socialism is based in rape. Socialism is based in we know what's better for you. We have guns and aircraft carriers, so we will take your shit and we'll spread it out how we want to because we know what's right for you. And the corruptible force of extreme and total power will not affect us because we're better than you, which means it definitely will. And then everybody will die. Ha ha ha. That's what, that's what motivates that is ego is saying, I know what's right for you. It's rape. It's saying, I want to fuck you. If you don't want to fuck me, doesn't matter to me. I want to fuck you. Anarcho-capitalism is the opposite of that. It's saying that every relationship has to be mutually consented. That is infinitely more ethical. Is it possible? I don't think so. Straight up. Do I want it to be possible? Yes. People say, who's going to build the roads? I don't know. Not the government. The government sucks at building roads. It's like 50 grand to fucking fill a pothole because you got to pay like nine bitches to hold a flag. And then half of the money's going to someone's cousin. Creasy Bear, I want it to be possible. Me too. I do. Of course I do. It would be so efficient. The reason I don't think it's possible is because we have a civilization of basically traumatized people. We're all raised with the government. We're all raised with the security of a boot on our neck. 
And I straight up don't know if we can, I don't think we can possibly reprogram that. In my mind, I can't imagine a world without a government. And the math works. So I question my instincts. I go, well, you know, but look at it. It's so much more efficient. You will, you will get people to build roads um, in exchange for money. And so they'll do a better job and they'll be bidding and the price will go down and then that'll be more flourishing. It, to me, it's like, this is awesome. But I have this boot on my neck that I almost have um, Stockholm syndrome with. And I think drugs should be legal. I just think that you shouldn't do them. Um, like I'm into like tiny government, but I know that's, that's a bitch move because I can't really explain why. The reason I became pro-life is because I couldn't explain why you can abort five weeks, but not 20 weeks. There's no logical difference, but it's obvious that like hands and heartbeat is a life. But why not five weeks? And like, that's that jump. I wanted to be five weeks. I wanted the social approval of being pro-choice. I wanted people to say, oh, you you don't hate women. You're one of the good guys. But I was wrestling and wrestling because I'd see the, the horror of, of taking out a, a bait. Like you can see a baby, you know, and then you see a pin, you know, just a little tiny thing. And you're like, well, that's not really a baby. And then you're like, but why not? And there's no argument. None that I've ever heard. So I had to go to conception and it sucked. So that's kind of why, uh, that's how I feel about government. Like I don't, I, w I want a tiny government. So the argument, why not no government? And I don't know. I just, I have no idea. I don't have a good argument, to be honest with you. It's like, um, Malinu is, is, is right with, with logical arguing. And uh, someone said rights, that's why. Right, but I, I, God-given rights. They're not given to you by the government. The government is a mafia organization. Fact. That is, that is not even debatable. The government is not giving you rights. They put you in a prison cell if you smoke marijuana. That's, that's not giving you rights. The, the government gives you no rights. And then people say like, well, they keep us safe. Yeah? You think the police right now in England are keeping them safe? You think the police, their interest is in the safety of the British people? No. They're the security guards to the mafia. And, and a lot of times cops do the right thing when you have um, a system where the people hold everyone accountable. Where the, like in America, that wouldn't happen. If I got arrested and the, and the police and they said uh, no one can report on it, America would go fucking crazy. No, they wouldn't do that because they know they couldn't. They haven't broken us. America is like full of fucking lunatics, like in a good way. But in England, once they knew they broke the people, once they, they pretty much made it little Pakistan, and once they raped 1,500 kids in Rotterdam and no one fucking did anything, no one needs to go on Joe Rogan and ran all these ideas and watch Joe Rogan just shut them all down. Uh, how would he shut them down, though? Tell me. I don't fucking know. The uh, masses are too stupid. The more civil rights laws there are, the less rights we have, of course. See, this is one of the uh, things I saw between Ruben and uh, Rogan was... Uh, you, you should be able to not serve black people. And that's, that's a tough reality. Like the Christian cake argument, you have to be able to choose who you sell. And the, and the reason that, that that's a tough reality is because long-term, it's way better for everyone. Racism would have been eliminated so much faster in the South uh, Rotterdam, not Rotterdam, just saying. Oh, it's all good. Well, I think that British people pronounce everything wrong, so it doesn't matter. It's not aluminium, it's aluminum, you fucking dumb retards. <laughs> so, I don't remember what I was talking about. I'm going to start drinking game. Next time someone says Rogan, everyone shits their pants. That's hilarious, Creasy Bear. I don't know what I was just talking about, by the way. Uh, stop talking about Rogan. Okay, what do you want me to talk about then, dipshit? This is a topic. So they're discussing um, the, 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 the cake thing, right? Where it's like, should a Christian 
be forced to make a cake for the gay wedding. And then they start going back and forth about they see both sides, of course. And uh, I don't see both sides. Of course not. Because then the, 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 the thing they always use is what if a Jew is forced to make a cake with a swastika? And everyone's like, oh, of course not. Because I've watched 3,000 Netflix things on Adolf Hitler. No one ever uses a uh, hammer and sickle, oddly, even though the death count's way higher. Like, ask a Ukrainian to make a, a cake with a hammer and sickle. Why doesn't that make people freak out? I don't know, because we're, you know, brainwashed, but that's all good. Anyway, so then they start being like, okay, so do you, deserve, do you have the right to not serve a group of people? Like, um, for gay weddings, you know, religion. It's like, yes. Now race. Do you have a right to not serve black people? Yes. And the reason the free market takes care of that is because then someone else says, I will, and then that guy will go out of business. The government cannot regulate morality. Jim Crow had to be put into law because the blacks and the whites were starting to get along too well. Do you understand that? The government, these people do not have your fucking back, dude. Look, Kathy Griffin calls out Kevin Hart for not attacking Trump. Like, is that respectful, Kathy? <laughs> maybe, maybe black people can think for themselves. How about that? Uh, you have to have freedom of association. Because now you can see what happens when you don't hold a principle. Now it's gone. Now, like, the civil rights movement had some major flaws in it. And I highly recommend you listen to uh, Malcolm Gladwell discuss the board versus... Uh, Brown versus Board of Education. How many black teachers got fired? How much, how much problems uh, forced integration caused? People wanted to integrate anyway. There had to be laws to not integrate. Laws. That's a dangerous precedent. Explain. Is gay a race? Uh, no, but that's a protected class now. And you want to know what's soon to be protected class? Everything. Everything they want. The trans thing is, want to know the importance, the legal importance of uh, this trans movement? If you identify as something you're not, you are that, right? So what does that mean in an authoritarian world? That means that reality doesn't matter to your demographic, which we have just legally shown to have uh, special protections. So now it's whoever we fucking choose. You under does, do people understand that? When you say, oh, I'm a man, but I... I uh, I identify as a woman and look at the result of this shit. Hang on. Let me show you. This is in the news right now. This is the result, guys. Uh, not equality, not utopia, not everyone holding hands and playing Frisbee with Sam, um, Sam Harris. In reality, this is what happens. Where is it? That was a good setup. My timing was off. This. Students and parents demand unfair rule change after two transgender teen sprinters come first and second in the girls' state championship months after one competed as a boy. Yeah, it's not helpful to women at all. So now the best women are now men. Um, but they but they identify. You see what I'm saying? So when the women when the men identify as women, now they're the best woman. Okay. Now now keep going with that. Let's say a 30-year-old identifies as an 8-year-old and he's in love. Ugh, right? That girl is as much a girl, or that guy is as much a girl as I'm an 8-year-old. So what is the legal, the legal precedent of all of this? This means that reality doesn't matter. What you say you are is what you are. So then the next thing is what, if what you are is a uh, protected class, Things don't apply to you. Whoa. That's how you consolidate power. All right. It's, it's a dark day for the Big Bear today. Let's play some music. Uh, UBI makes UBI. I don't give that mean. I don't agree with Joe on everything, but he looks for truth. I respect that. Yeah, I respect the fuck out of Joe. I'm upset about the Tommy Robinson thing, and I'm upset watching Joe say he doesn't even know who the fuck the guy is. And, but, he's, but he's interested in like, a spider somewhere was found with a big dick and some, you know, that's what I'm frustrated about. And it's probably a little irrational. It's probably a little emotional because fucking, I think Tommy Robinson's probably going to be fucking murdered now. And, but whatever. 
That's what's pissing me off. That's what's making me be like, how do you not, how do you say these things? Because it's just like, it's not an idea when you see somebody, uh, when you see someone's life at stake, you know? happy, not as in sucking a dude. I am feeling so gay. The fact they took this word is a little rude. When I scream I'm so gay, dudes try to suck my dick. And I say I'm just happy misinterpreting and that's kind of sick but I won't stop using words that I like and I'm still looking for my bike that nigga stole my bike plot twist uh I just I had some snot in my nose yeah see I can still be funny when I want I just also can be a fucking dick you gotta take it all or nothing I can't just be one or the other uh hey I've been watching for a year now but first check have you verified his bear balls also I'm in Bozeman any chance you want to do a show here I've done a show in Bozeman I love it and welcome bear balls Malone is okay for news and getting the facts straight, but he's fucked up with relationships. Should not be giving advice on a personal level. It's a valid cri criticism. He's helped me with some stuff, but I get what you're saying. It's kind of tough to be able to diagnose people that fast and, and, and like give like really intense advice that could be impact the rest of their life. But at the same time, I know that he's coming from a place of, uh, of uh, less abuse which is always good, but I think that people need a little more information before they can give like full blown advice. I, I have that issue all the time on here. Like someone will ask me something. And I'm like, I need to know more. I'll give you a shot, but just take this with a grain of salt. I need to know so much more before I can really give you advice. Ragnarok. They have denied reality so long while we were still trying to work out one issue and fully explore and explain if they leapfrogged us to the next thing. Yeah. And they never look back. Jay, anyone else see the article about 2,400 arrests in Pedo Ring in Florida? Of course you didn't. These people hate children. Well, they hate, um, they hate anyone who threatens their candy. Because it's really tough for people to uh, conceive of the hatred of children. So you don't have to conceive of that. Conceive of someone who puts candy over truth. Who, who says, I will do and say what you want as long as I get more stuff. Because that's in everybody. There is, a, there is that demon in everyone. Uh... So, if the existence of children and the reverence for children and the reverence for family is a direct threat to stuff and money, which it is in America, because people with families and children don't vote for more of these giant government programs because they feel they, they do a better job themselves. So that's a threat to an ever-expanding government. So then um, the hatred of children is necessary for stuff. And that's where it comes from. Domino's Pizza is fixing the roads already. Oh, that's interesting. Socialism always ends in starvation and genocide. That's true, Roy Bear. Thank you. 
I worked for WVDOH for two summers in college and it opened my eyes to how bad the government is at accomplishing goals and road work. Their goal is to not finish. And Thomas Sowell worked for the government in Puerto Rico and that's when he went hard right wing is because he saw that the goal isn't his goal. There's this weird assumption that the government is always about finishing things. Their rational goal, it's not because they're stupid. Their rational goal is to make more money and expand. And that doesn't happen when they finish things. If you're taking requests, Into the Mystic by Van Morrison. Great stream today. Speaking through thoughts is very useful. Oh, thank you, Creasy Bear. I agree with you on that, by the way. Sometimes I know that, that um, unfinished thoughts aren't always the most responsible thing for me to do. But I think there is something valuable to seeing a process. Because I think a lot of people don't get to see that anymore, you know? Because people don't really work through anything. They're like, what does my brand say? Oh, it says, I only wear vests this summer. Uh, into the mystic. And I'll open some, uh, open some stuff. I love this song. <laughs> I've never played on the piano before, though. We, we, were bo- we were born before the wind. Also younger than the sun. Our the bonnie boat is one as we sailed into the mystic. I gotta re-listen to it, I think. Uh when the fog horn blows, I'll be coming home. I think I can do a good job of that right now. Vivaldi's Winter. Like you play for Elise. Oh, I gotta, I'll work on that. It's one of my favorite songs. Last name is Solomon. Uh, this is Montana Wild Bear. Last name is Solomon. Jews assume I'm Jewish. And when they find out I'm not, they look disappointed. Haven't caught a live stream in a while. Been working, making that money. Wait, maybe I am a little bit Jewish. I think you are, buddy. Solomon is, is Jewish and so is the desire to make money. And so is uh, disappointment. And you disappointed me. Eric, can you mod Brandon too? One of the LWC, a lot of the Crowder homies. Of course, I love Brandon. Also, play when doves cry or something funky. Need some bounce. Bro, I'm not bouncing today with you, Eric. Eric always likes to bounce. He's like, yeah, yeah, make it bounce. Make it bounce. I'm like, I'm sad today, Eric. He's like, bounce sad. Bounce sad. Bounce sad. Why do we keep modding everyone? Is there really this need for like tons of mods? But I'll mod you. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, we just have like everyone's now a fucking mod. Do we really need that many mods? Bounce. Bounce when you're sad. The sad bounce. No, today is uh, we're out of control. Is, is there a whole thing where everyone's a mod now? We're flooding the market with, with wrenches. England will become an enemy of the United States, the country that has sacked by Muslims. I can't make any political predictions right now. I've made social predictions that came out right, but I don't fucking know what's going to go down with some of this stuff. I have no idea. Bounce. Bounce, bounce. Bounce, bounce. If you mod me, I will unverify myself. Well, that's not exactly a, uh, a good argument. I thought my neighbor was Jewish, but I found out later as I get older, he had a heart on. I don't think that those are mutually exclusive. Uh, I think you can have a heart on when you're Jewish. I th- I have no idea. They're creating a hierarchy. I, I, I'll take all your wrenches. I'll take everybody's wrench goes. Bear Jew first. He'll spiral. And I'm going to do it on a Saturday so he can't even call me because he's all fucking wrapped up in his Jew stuff. Mods do think they're special, huh? Are we making Star Valley Sneetches? I'll take them. I t- I'll take them all. I'll ta- I'm will i going to take one right now just to show I can. And it will be the Bear Jew. Hey, Bear Jew. You just lost your wrench, bro, for no reason. Hope that scares the shit out of you guys. There was no reason I just did that to the Bear Jew. And he's never going to get it back. That's for life. Who's up next? I don't give a fuck. Who's up next? Dom? Hey, Dom. 
You just lost your fucking wrench. Yeah, keep trying to cross me. Keep trying to fucking ask me for wrenches when I'm talking about being sad. Who's next? Yeah, down. Yeah, no more wrench. Oh, no, Brandon got... Brandon has a wrench. Oh, yeah, this is the final solution. Next up. Oh, 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 my, my best friend of all the mods, the guy that I talk so highly about, Eric Nimmer. Oh, guess what? Everybody's at risk. Nimmer's gone. Gone. Lost his fucking wrench. That's right. You had wrench privilege. All right, I think I made a point. Now we fucking learn, don't we? Don't push me. All right, back to the Super Chats. Wrench parations. <laughs> Playing the piano. Uh, dude, this is hilarious. All right. <clears throat> For those of you just listening to this, by the way, they're ha- like it's real funny in the chat. So just just know that, that this is a, a real good time over here in, in, in real, real world life. <clears throat> Hashtag mod me too. Well, I know you you wrote that before my current purge, so I won't uh, execute another innocent in the public square to show that my will is, is that strong. Um, but, you know, try it again. Turns out you locked your bike up in the back of the store. It's been sitting there for years and it's rusty now. That'd be hilarious if I just forgot. I would love your thoughts on the Daily Wire's Father's Day roundtable. I haven't seen it yet. Also sent you a hilarious Trump vid for your Instagram box. Thank you. Well, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it, on the... Uh, uh, Father's Day vid. Heard of David Angelo. Comedian did a YouTube series called uh, Economics Years Ago. Three minute episodes all worth a watch. Covers roads and other stuff. Government road taxes are way more than roads cost. No, I completely agree. My thing is, how do you get people, myself included, that can't picture a world without a boot? You know? Did you know Sam Cedar says you, Malinu, Ruben Peterson appeal to angry white men? Well, he's right. We do. I'm an angry white man. Why would people that are like me not like me? You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, I, I don't understand how, how... Can I get my wrench back again? Saddam? No. No, you have to learn. You'll get it back maybe if I see that you're being good. <laughs> the bear juice says I'm sad now. Well, it's not about you. Wait a minute, why does Nimmer still have his wrench? Hang on. How did Nimmer keep his wrench? I just took it away. Big Bear's taking mods for one-way helicopter rides. Exactly. You're not angry, you're gay. Uh, no, I have anger. For sure I have anger. How does Nimmer still have his wrench? I'm trying this again. What tricky fucking thing is he doing? Dude, I'll put you in timeout. <laughs> Mash, if I just put Nimmer in timeout? Dude, it really is a protect... He does... He does. How does he still have it? Dude, black people can't have their wrenches taken away. And now I can't even try to take it away. How does the Jew not have that? Like, seriously. Like, Bear Jew couldn't do that. He couldn't call in one of his Jew things. Wow. Wow. That was wild. Maybe it just took a while to kick in or something. I don't know. Government builds nothing. Contractors build with tax money taken from everyone. If no private contractors, we would have nothing. Oh, I know. Trust me. I know. I know the government's a big mafia organization. Dude, Nimmer still has this wrench. This is, this is like really creepy almost. It's like, how do they know he's black? I really like because that wrench has been is being used to uh, to steal bikes. Well, I'm about to put him in timeout. Unless I figure this out, he's going in timeout. Dude, Nimmer's going in timeout. Dude, they probably have an algorithm to check uh, skin contrast, and they're like, it it's because of historical oppression, you know, wrench privilege, and because you know, for most of history in America, they would never get a wrench because they know that everyone would would steal bikes with the wrench. And it's because bikes. Dude, this is this is wild. 
Dude, Jews are not a protected class, guys. Owen just pulled Eric over and is trying to arrest him. I know, I may have to shoot him. I get, I, I'm starting to really get all of it. How the fuck did Nimmer do that? Oh, dude, I have a theory. I have a theory about old Nimmer. What if he added it to his name? What if he... Dude, I figured you out, Nimmer. I, I do think you're a... Fu I, I, wait a minute, no. Because I, can I add you as a moderator? No, you have a protected thing. I thought that you just changed your name to be blue and add a wrench. No, because I can't even add you as a moderator now. You're a permanent moderator. Guys, what the fuck? He's going in timeout. Go ahead, say another thing, Nimmer. Just wait. He's going in timeout. One more word. <laughs> If I can't put him in time out, I'm going to Bourdain myself. By the way, that's a that's a total joke. Jesus, I don't want to go down that fucking weird road where people are like, all right, say, say one thing. Say one thing. What's the difference between a minarchist and an ANCAT for about six months? Oh, that's funny. Uh, Michael Malice told me that joke once. Is it because Eric has monetized streaming privileges? No, it's because he's black. I'm telling you. They fucking... You're fucking killing me. Oh, yeah, this is pretty funny. He's hiding. He is hiding. He is hiding. Because he knows I'll put his ass in time out. I'll put him on probation. It's his channel. How does he do it, though? How the fuck does he do it? Dude, there's like tons of dudes in here that should know what's happening. It's a coup. Nimmer. What's the difference between a... Gynecologist and a proctologist, this much. Guyans and Bear, that's not funny enough. So you get your wrench taken. <laughs> Dude, this is so fucking funny. I just took Guyans and Bear's wrench. Who, who's up now? All right. I'm going to get out of here. It's been two hours. And I did a lot of bitching today. I don't see what the fuck's wrong with appealing to angry white guys. You know why white guys are angry? Because people aren't running things properly. And white dudes are all about running things efficiently. And so, of course, we're fucking angry. So why can't we talk it over so we're not angry anymore so that we fucking start doing things good again? Uh, so disappointed, Big Bear. Trump's video for Kim Jong? How have we not talked about this? Um, I don't know. What's there to talk about? It was, uh, I thought it was good for crossing, uh, culture barriers. Cause it was like, it had that, uh, that format of, of like a movie trailer. Cause you gotta understand there's so many cultural barriers between like a North Korean and like a New York fucking real estate guy that you got to go with basic three art, uh, three art, uh, act arc, you know, in a world, two men could either be kick-ass best friends or horrible enemies. You decide. And that uh, Dom got blocked? I didn't mean to block Dom. You know what? You know what? Dom gets his wrench back and he gets unblocked. That's how things work here. Oh, and by the way, this is a cult. I'm about to get real fucking weird. How do I give uh, get him out of there? How do I unblock Dom? I don't fucking know. Hang on. Dom was putting time out. Hang on. Let me, let me find Dom. We were born before the wind. Okay, I go to my creator studio. Like, calling someone angry isn't an insult, by the way. Like, I don't know when the whole, everybody became fucking Buddhists, but saying, like, you're angry, oh, Owen's angry. It's like, yeah. So is the tiger you just pissed on. Anger. My whole family's almost always angry. Not Amy, which is why her being out of town right now is, uh, is pretty intense for me. All right, community. Is this where I go? Like, she's usually the one being like, calms me down. Community settings. Oh, here we go. So 
I block Dom, huh? Where the fuck is Dom? Are you guys sure? I didn't block Dom. Who's not on my Dom? Huh. Moderators. Dude, Nimmer's a genius. He's not a moderator. I don't know what the fuck he did. Man. Moderators, hidden users. Guys, I didn't block down. I think they're all trying to do some sort of uh, some sort of coup. If any of their names are Todd, they're doing a coup de Todd. Yeah. Dude, Nimmer, hang on, Dom talks so Owen can see you. Westside Bear, Dom's back. Oh, yeah, I figured it out myself, boys. Nimmer, I bet, is a YouTube. How did Nimmer do that? Give Cod his wrench back, not Dom. Yeah, Cod gets his wrench back. Here you go, Cod. What's that? Wait, I lost my wrench for that joke, but coup de Todd is okay with well, no, I'm establishing that it's not about ethics at all. It's about my will and my force. I'm showing you what, what that really looks like. Now you get your wrench back. You see? You see how that feels like? You have no idea why I do this. And that's the problem because there's no rules. And now you don't even know how to improve or how to not or what could happen. I'll fucking, I'll hit any of you guys. I'll take your wrench. I'm going to give a wrench randomly. Randomly. Who gets a wrench? Who gets a wrench? I'm just going to fucking give a wrench to a random person. Who should get a wrench? Impress me. No one. Fuck, fuck all of you. Huh? See, you see how, how mental this shit is? No, I'm going to give a wrench to somebody. The Brazilian bear. Brazilian bear. I did hit a, uh, I did hit a, uh, a quota and she's brown and a woman. So now I can do five more white guys. Like we all want two plus two equals five. That's hilarious. Yeah. Chaos is no good. Smash the like button. You guys come on. This is cracking me up. Thank you. Veteran bear. You may randomly get a wrench for that. And I may just take one away from someone else for no reason. Coat or bear. All right, guys. I'm out of here. I don't want a wrench, says Learning Bear. Hey, guess what, Learning Bear? Even though I like you as a person and actually know you, you just got put in a timeout. There's, yeah, there you go. 300 seconds. Why don't you go in there and you think about your funny little joke, trying to act like you don't want a wrench. Yeah, well, now you lose your ability to speak. That's what happened to me. I make fun of one dude's pubes, and I'm out. Not fair. Now you're in timeout. I dare you to mod me, Owen says, Big J man. Dude, daring does not work with a man of will. You understand that? That dare just made me be like, never. I don't fucking, I'm not here to impress you. I'm not here to impress you, motherfucker. Yeah, the wrenches are all drunk with power, but guess what? I can give them and take them anytime I want. All hail the bear Saddam. Eric, I lost my wrench. I'm starting to line with Tripoli and Jesnick. Dude, I was just about to give you your wrench back, by the way. I was just about to give you a wrench back, Nimmer. I really was like, I was already clicking on the thing to be like, all right, Nimmer's back. But not only do you not get it, um, you're dead to me. You're dead to me. Because I'm OB Hussein. How do I see this? I see all of it. I see all of it. I've seen every comment anyone's ever made. As soon as this is over, I spend hours just researching line by line what everyone said. And then I have a little notepad and I have a little like who to kill pad and shit. And uh, you know, I have a team of crackpot MIT guys trying to figure out algorithms as to everyone's secret motivation. Like for example, Bear Gribble. He jerks off the whole time. That's all he's doing. And I, we can tell based on the algorithm of what letters he uses. And I, we know, I know exactly when he comes. 
Gulag. Gulag for all of you. And then no gulag. And that's how you get just complete authority because you always have to be in the moment. You can't remember the past, can't plan for the future. What do I do? What do I do? I'll tell you what you do. Owen is a three-year-old with a web webcam. That's funny, Liam. You impressed me with that. Maybe you get a wrench. I'll come in the night. Uh, Ken, absolute wrenches corrupt absolutely. Precisely why you running the country solo would be hilarious and possibly horrifying. Totally. Look at how I'm running this. Imagine if I was running the country. I would just start being like, and you die. And you don't. Not really. I wouldn't kill innocent people. I joined the wrench army to get uh, black nimmers to thank me for the freedom. Yeah, now he keeps his wrench forever because that was hysterical. Fine, I'll tell all of your secrets. You don't think I planned for this, Eric? I gave you false secrets. False secrets that will eventually lead to your downfall because I knew you would reach for those secrets one day. And just like the poison fruit that you steal from me that I pre-poisoned because then I know that when you cross me and you think you're burning me, the secrets are all false and it will reveal weakness in you. I want us paid by a big soy. Damn it, you got me. I'm a big soy shill. My goal, along with a bunch of snapping turtles, is to get rid of every dude's dick. This is the funniest shit. I'm glad this turned so funny. I fucking hate criticizing people like that. All right. You should be a comedian, Owen. It's a good one. Owen started Black Lives Matter and his eyebrows are fake. Those were, bo those were both uh, planted lies. Now you're going to be assassinated by Justin Trudeau because he takes a lot of pride in both those things. Okay. All right. I want to make a song about Trudeau's eyebrows. Um, okay. What's a good tune right now? What should I do it? Uh, what should I do it with? What song should I uh, parody? Talk to me, guys. I'm in the normal chat. What should I parody? What song do you want to hear? Rainbow Connection. Well, my voice is a little fucked right now, but... Uh, Golden Slumbers. That's a good one. Bob Dylan. Come Sail Away. Rocket Man. Piano Man. Ima Imagine's a good one. Uh, threats, nigga. I've been making threats since I've been in kindergarten. Ask y'all don't hurt. <laughs> Uh, what about mother? All right. <sighs> mother, do you think they'll touch my face? Does soy have no taste? Mother, why do my eyebrows are held on by crazy glue? They say Castro is my dad. Is it true? Hush, Canadians, Canadians. Ah, uh, don't you cry. Justin is here to pay off all the ISIS fighters for you. Justin, uh, <laughs> Justin will bring a bunch of people here that really want to kill Jews. Justin will think the real problems facing Canada are words like mankind. He has no eyebrows. Um. Uh, la, 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 la. I don't fucking know. That was it. I give it a shot. They say Castro is my dad. Is it true? Uh, all right. I gotta go. I'm losing my fucking mind. Bye, everybody. Hit the like button. Don't get fake eyebrows.
Much love to Tommy uh, Robinson. And, uh, yeah. Good shit. Don't trust snapping turtles. Rogan's a good dude. I think I was just a little triggered that, uh, he just, I don't know. I got a little triggered. I'm a trigger lover. I'm in a mixed relationship. I'm a trigger lover. All right.